Uh, welcome back, Ashley Clark. It's fantastic Thank to have you. you here. Pleasure to be here. Um, and welcome to everybody in the audience. Thank you for coming along this evening. Thank you for coming to Selfridges. Um, the way we're going to run this is I've got a lot of questions here that I personally want to know the answers to, but I'm kind of thinking you've all got questions as well. So we're going to do a mix of my questions and audience questions. And we've got two the team members here with microphones who will be there to pass your, to give your questions uh, uh, to Beck. So Beck, let's, let's kick off now. Um, for anyone here who doesn't know who you are, and I can't believe there's anyone who doesn't know who you are, you know, give us a little bit about your background. You know, where did you come from? How did you get to starting such an amazing business? What, what was that journey? Uh, wow, that's a big question. So I'm Beck Ashley Clark, and 10 years ago, I um, started a jewelry brand online called Ashley Clark. Um, and today we're sort of still predominantly an online brand, but we have stores in Liberty and in Selfridges and in Harrods, and we've recently gone into um, the US. Um, and I'd like to say it was all by a grand design, but it really evolved. I, I knew I wanted to start my own business. I saw a gap in the market, in the jewelry market between sort of the very, very high-end brands and then high street jewelry brands and nothing really interesting in that in that middle space. Um, and I knew quite a bit at the time about technology. So for me, piecing those two things together of launching a online jewelry brand m made sense. And it's really evolved from there and the team's grown and now the team, you know, carry the business mm. forward into other areas. Fantastic. Um, I'm kind of guessing there might be some people with their own businesses here. What, what would you tell them? I mean, you're, you're an amazing role model, particularly in small businesses and online businesses. What advice would you give to people here who are thinking of setting up a business or have just set one up or maybe struggling through, the, through those early days? What would your advice um, be? Well, I think it, starting a business is, is a bit like having children in that there's never a good time to do it. Yeah. So it, it's one of those things that there are a hundred good reasons not to start a business. So you sort of just have to close your eyes and jump. Um, uh, and once you've jumped, I think it, there's a bit of an endurance game, basically, because again, it's not easy at the beginning. You get a lot of no's, you get a lot of um, people that, there are lots of reasons to not keep going, I think. Um, so you just have to push on through, would be my advice. Fantastic. So you've got an amazing jewelry business, award-winning jewelry business. Um, What's driven the ability to expand to the degree that you have? You know, you've expanded incredibly fast using online technology. Have you done that? What's been the, what's been the key to the success there of your business? Um, I think having a great product is at the heart of, of what we do. And um, that is, that's an ongoing sort of, area that we're always trying to perfect so our design process when we're looking at new designs that's what carries the business forwards but certainly you know online allowed me to get started in a way that i would never have you know i certainly didn't have the money to open a shop or um and couldn't compete with a cartier or that type of um that type of brand but online allowed me to do that and that you know if you search luxury jewelry in google you probably get ashley clark and that's because we did something quite unusual at the time which was to sell fine jewelry in an online environment so that's a that's definitely been a great platform um and that and now it's about the the sort of the same old rules of business so it's about good distribution in great stores brand building PR, continually perfecting the product, um, and um, and really having a great team. I think that sort of gets more, there's only so much that one person can do, and, and once you reach a certain size, there have to be key members of the team that are pushing that forward. 
But one of the things at Google that we really believe strongly in is building an amazing culture and getting people working together very, very strongly. I think you've done very similar things that I can see inside of Ashley Clark. How do you build that culture? How have you created that? What, what typifies that culture and that way of working inside of Ashley Clark? I think um, as I've grown up, I've realized that you have to let people experiment and make mistakes. Um, and that even if you think you know the right answer, almost people have to be allowed to, mm. to do that. Um, and I think as well, the, the culture that we have at Ashley Clark is very entrepreneurial. So everyone in the business is an entrepreneur. You know, they're the ones, they've got to design their piece of jewelry. They've got to um, open a new store. They've got to market. And, um, and so you have to obey the rules of being mm. an entrepreneur, which is that sort of, you know, don't take no for an answer mm. you know, and just keep, keep on pushing and be very proactive. And I think we, no one survives very long in our business if they're not like mm. that. Not because we're horrible, but because, because that's sort of, it, it's not going to be enjoyable unless you're, you, you feel like it's your baby as well and you're building it too. Part of your story when we were speaking before that inspired me was your discussion of your suppliers and your supply chain and how you work with them and how you see them as part of your business. Could you tell the audience a little bit about you know, where your suppliers are located, how you work with them, you know, how you source things? And how that whole family works together. Yeah, so I think, you know, we st I started the business in London and we were a very sort of London-centric business to begin with. And increasingly, we've opened stores in the US um, and um, our suppliers have become more international. So we started making jewellery in the UK. We now make some in Thailand. We make some in India. And so our um, creative director and our product development team might be in... Thailand sourcing gemstones and I might be uh, you know doing a press event in New York and now we use you know technology like hangouts and um, and other things to communicate and mm. with a visual product that's very important because mm. it's not something that you can sort of do on the telephone or by email you literally have to see it um, so I, I think technology has always been an enabler in our business because we were an online business to begin with. But now, increasingly, as the team gets more and more disparate across the world at different times, it helps us to communicate so much more easily. Do you have a secret for time zone management? Because I, I always struggle with that. No, I'm rubbish. I oh, okay. People at four <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> Let's take a couple of questions from the audience. Do we have the team members with the microphones? Gentlemen here, if you, hang on one second. If you give you a microphone so everyone can hear. May I ask a question about Google for Work? Yes, certainly. Uh, I was using your product for two years and I was really excited when I set up my own business. I'm also a blogger. However, when you released the iPhone app, yep. you changed the exchange protocol for the iPhone. Was it strategical or because so I... So we're not going to do a technology deep, deep dive <laughs> okay. into no. IMAP protocols at this point, but thank you very much for the question. Do we have a, uh, an Ashley Cog or jewellery or small business related <laughs> question? <laughs> but thank you, I'm happy to chat afterwards. <laughs> Lady over here. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Which specific tools did you use to grow your online business? Um, when you say tools... The... Not selling online. So to make your, your business grow online. So, well, we, um, we use an open source software platform called Magento. I don't know whether there's a Google... Um, it's fine. Comparison. <laughs> um, but Magento, which is very good, and uh, um, there's free versions as well, and that's, um, that's excellent. And I think, you know, for, for us, it's, that's been a huge enabler. Um, and then we do regular digital marketing. So we do search engine optimization. We rely heavily on Google for that. Um, we... Uh, we grow our email database, we use affiliates, um, and then increasingly, um, because the online space has got so competitive, 
um, whereas it wasn't to begin with, um, we have to use old-fashioned PR and marketing as well to drive traffic to the site. Fantastic. Gentleman over here. Hopefully not an IMAP protocol question. Yeah. <laughs> um, I won't be able to answer that. It's okay. No, it's a, a question about your business. I'm just wondering how you dealt, um, maybe particularly at the beginning, with selling um, a relatively luxury product online. How you dealt with the fact that um, uh, your customers can't try it on or see how it looks with a particular <laughs> item of clothing see if a ring fits or I think I mean we still have that we still have that challenge and the way we've dealt with it is to go offline as well so that um so that we have you know the core of our business is online but we have concessions in Selfridges and I think I think now you do have to sort of compete everywhere you can't you know I, I used to be a bit of an online snob and think well we can just be online but actually you, you do need to be in stores you need to be in department you need to be where your customers are you know you need a mobile website you need you need a regular website and you need to be in the stores um i think there are clever technologies coming through you know where you can try things on and that type of thing and increasingly we use a lot more video, so we have a lot more video content on our site, and I think that's going to really be the future of, of selling. Um, and we invest much more than a regular jewellery brand would do in photography, um, because th that's all we have. You know, our website is essentially a list of photographs, and that's the most important, the most important piece of the puzzle. <laughs> So there's three areas that I see coming out in this dialogue that the questions have, have, have pulled out. We'll come to some more questions in a moment. You've spoken about the employee, employee experience, kind of the, the Ashley Clark family, including the suppliers, how you collaborate together digitally there. You've spoken about the brand and the brand building stuff. Um, and then about the customer experience, that digital customer journey. Where do you see that going in the future? You know, how's that? How's that experience at Ashley Clark in 10, 15, 20 years? What's that experience going to be like if I go to buy some jewellery on there? Yeah, I do, it, that's a really good question. I mean, I think, I, and I'm not sure that, I'm not sure that I, know, I know the answer. I think, actually, the, one of the biggest pieces of the puzzle is the, the delivery proposition. Mm. And all of the delivery companies have got so much better at that. Mm. You know, it is about... It's sort of finding me the whole click and collect stuff yeah. that's got um that's got a lot better i wonder whether people will end up shopping from our social media platforms you know sort of in terms of i if i post something on so we have two um instagram accounts we have ashley clark and we have beck ashley clark mm. and i compete with our social media executive who's actually much better than me and has more followers but um but i think that people might just end up buying directly from from there you know you post a picture of a locket and they might i, I don't know whether those are going to be transaction enabled but it would make yeah. sense to me you know why go to the website if you're already following you've seen the product straight on instagram or i've put, just posted it somewhere so you're creating a brand that's competing with your own brand that's a that's a fabulous what in terms building. of building yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, well no because we drive traffic yeah. we both drive traffic both our interests are aligned that's fine that's um, great i think we had a question from a gentleman over here yeah hey i think Hello. Yeah. Uh, could you talk about how, when you started off, like what was your vision and did you take any external funding which sort of helped you uh, achieve that vision? Because most startups go through that phase where, you know, they're trying to understand whether they should bring in external investors. And just wondering if your vision changed with, uh, for the good or the bad. Uh, it's also a really good question. Yeah, I mean, I took investment immediately off a business plan because I had no money to start a business. Um, and because I was fortunate enough that it was at the time when you just had to have the word website in your business plan and people would put money into it. So um, I did raise quite a bit of money. Um, and 
I'm sure that that's enabled us to do many things that we otherwise wouldn't have done. Um, but I would say it's also enabled us to make the worst mistakes that we've ever made. So actually some of the best things we've done as a business are when we have no cash. Because you're more creative, you're more resourceful, you have to focus really properly on what's working and what's not working. And whenever we've raised money, we will get a little bit lazy. Um, so, yeah, I'm sure there's a, a clever balance in between, but um, but I think I, I think yeah, I think don't be put off by n not having cash because actually w the best stuff we've done mm. by a country mile is when we don't. So if I can share a little Google secret with you as well, and please don't tell anyone. You know, inside of Google, we keep the resources working on projects really, really small. We have tiny teams working on things. It's small groups of people. We deliberately keep them hungry, and we deliberately reduce resources, and we get much better results from them. And it sounds like you're saying there's a similar kind of, you know, you're not too lavish. You kind of keep yeah. people humble. And, and you really have to look at stuff. You know, you can, spending money is quite easy, mm. and if you've, got more money to spend, you're not necessarily looking at what the most important mm. stuff is. Um, so, yeah, it's a, it, may, it focuses the mind having mm. no money, <laughs> I can tell you that much. <laughs> One of the things that you just said before that struck an idea with me was the kind of whole Instagram, mobile, social. Have you done any work, or is there anything you can share with us around the, you know, the customer experience? Is it all coming through desktop? commerce? Is it coming through mobile? Are people buying things from their phone? Um, or, uh, so, in what is quite a luxury product? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not as up on this as I should be. All I know is that the tablet browsing is much bigger mm. than it ever was, and that people use our mobile website for browsing, but less so for transactions. Okay. But I think the the we will probably we're not moving fast enough but we will need to move faster in terms of making sure that our website is ipad focused rather than desktop focused and is there a particular demographic around the time of day that people are looking can you, um, can you identify any particular yeah, trends when there when they're not in the shop so saturday is a bad day for okay. us um online whereas in stores it's our best day um uh, so people aren't shopping online on Saturday because they're going into the stores. Um, but it's Sunday nights, interestingly, Mondays are uh, pretty much our busiest day online. So and do you optimize your online, your advertising, that kind of stuff around those time zones, or is that that's something for the future? Maybe we don't do a lot now of um, of paid for mm. digital advertising. We focus our spend much more on search engine optimization. Okay, and organic. And organic, yeah. Because we're in the game of brand building mm -hmm. generally, um, and so the vast majority of our search comes in on a brand term. How would you advise people on, obviously, if people here have their own business and they're going to set in place a content marketing strategy, look to that organic SEO growth, what would you advise them on that kind of content to create, you know, what to put it out there, what channels to use? Um, what are your learnings? Yeah, I think, uh, well, I think, I'm not sure how great we've been on pushing the content off-site, but I think we concentrate a lot on making sure that our content is optimized on-site. Yeah. So, um, in, yeah, and I'm sure that you know, I'm sure that a lot of mainstream big jewelry brands won't be doing that to the sort of degree that that we will. So we will be optimizing around terms like necklace and pendant and mm. rose gold and all of the things that are important to us. And we'll also make sure that um, that our Magento platform is enabling Google so that it can mm. read it properly. Um, Fantastic. Let's take another audience question. Gentleman here. Yeah, so you've talked a lot about social media and marketing in that way. Um, how have you managed to implement the zero moment of truth, which is actually a Google framework as such? Oh, what, what, what was it? Uh, the zero moment of truth. Okay, go on. Tell me what that is, because so, I'm out of the loop. On... Um, 
essentially it's that you use multiple platforms, both text, media, um, billboards, etc., to actually get the, the user integrated with the product before they actually purchase it as such. And so the exact question around that um, is, How have you used that along with your social media marketing? So uh, uh, we find this very difficult to measure, this stuff. Um, and it, uh, I did a lot of digital marketing as I was in my earlier career. And, uh, um, but in our business, we found it really difficult to measure. Is this... Is, is this coming in, is this product selling because it looks great on the website or because we put most social media behind it or because it's been in the Telegraph or in Vogue or you know, what is it that, um, and we haven't found an answer. And I think, I think it is, it, it's the mix. It's the mix, you know, everyone says, well, you don't know which part of your advertising is measurable, and obviously digital should, should blow that away, but it doesn't seem to anymore. Because for social, for instance, we have, I think we have about 30,000 followers across the board. We push out lots of great content via our social platforms, um, but the actual um, direct transactions from that is, is rather small, but I can tell you from my gut that if we switch it off that we'll we won't get traffic to our sites in the same way um so i don't know i can give you a su super quick insight into that there's, there's a great framework that you can take which is not often spoken about which is kind of four four key steps in the buying journey the first is when people see things the stimulus so people are seeing things they don't know that they want to buy so they're seeing amazing jewelry and they're thinking wow it's beautiful they're engaging with it they reach a point then where they're starting to think about hmm, that's nice that would fit into my life that could be a good gift for somebody etc and then they, they, they actually reach a point of doing something and then there's a fourth step which is about helping them or caring for them and creating community afterwards so when we build our marketing we put metrics and attribution around each of those stages and we try and look at capturing information for that buyer's journey, that customer digital journey to move through that see, think, do, care stage. And it's a nice modern framework to just help you think about the problem, but it's tough. It's a really tough problem. But that's a good answer. That's a really <laughs> good answer. I work in marketing at Google, so I'm bound to have some of those things. So, Time's, time's moving on here. I did want to get a couple of questions in around kind of your role, you know, as a role model and a, a, a leader in business, obviously you, your MBE. Can you tell us a bit about your, you know, your position there as a role model? How's that been? Yeah, I didn't know. I mean, I don't really see myself. How was it getting the MBE? That must be amazing. That was amazing. That was, that was good fun. Yeah, I got a letter through the post and I thought it was um, my driving license being renewed. And, uh, um, and my husband said, oh, it's probably a knighthood. Like, oh, you're never going to get one. And then I opened it. I was like, ooh, <laughs> this actually. Um, so that was good fun. Uh, but I suppose, you know, because you're so buried in work most yeah. of the time, you don't sort of think of yourself evolving as a role model. I still see myself as someone you know, pretty much on day one, running, starting a business and having the same, you know, just different versions mm -hmm. of the same issues to tackle each time. But, um, but I think role models are important. I definitely looked for them as a younger person and definitely as a younger woman. And I couldn't really find any, or I could find one that I sort of, you know, I like the look of them, but they were stupid or they were really clever, but I didn't like the look of them. Mm -hmm. So there were, weren't people that sort of, um, there weren't enough women in business, I think, 15 years ago, who I aspired um, to be. So I find it very inspirational, the kind of leaders like yourself coming through. What, what advice would you give to, you know, women who are coming in and setting up businesses now, you know, what unique things could you pass on to them? What coaching would you give? I think the, the not taking no for an answer 
and I still do that. You know, that you get those all the time. Everyone's like, oh, no, we don't want to do this. We don't want to decide. If you get a no, it means you're you're asking the wrong question or you're asking the wrong person. I think you've just got to keep going mm. in a different mutation. Mm. You know, but we said um, uh, Selfridges is a prime example here, anybody from Selfridges. So yeah, Harrods came to see us four years ago, saw the jewellery, bought it, boom, we were in. It was a piece of cake. Selfridges, I called like every month for for two years, I think. And, and and then all of a sudden, and I'd obviously sort of been getting to the wrong person or not really resonating mm -hmm. somehow. Um, but then all of a sudden, somebody picked up the phone and we got a meeting and we were straight straight in. So I think you do have to just keep, keep pushing. Um, it's an done endurance a, you, test. You've done amazingly from it. Let's take a final couple of questions because we're running out of time now and, and Beck has, to, has a train to catch. So final couple of questions coming up. Gentlemen here, can we get your microphone, please? Sorry? Can oh, we yeah, catch yeah. your oh, microphone? Okay, okay. Thank okay. you. Um, yes, as there was any work between you and Google, like for search engines, optimization or something like that, and did you ask them for help? And if so, did they reply to you? And is there was any work between you and them? Uh, uh, so, yes and no, in, um, in terms of when we do search engine optimization, it's Google who we're thinking about, you know, there, I, don't, I don't know whether there are very many other search engines now, so when we optimize for search, it's all about Google, um, but I don't think we have much interaction with Google in that. More recently, however, with Google Apps for Work, we have had interaction, so we use um, we use Google Hangouts a lot, and Google Docs and Google Drive, and that has enabled, which is why Google did the video with us showing our sort of creative director in India showing some gemstones to me in London and um, hanging out with somebody, our tech developer in Glasgow. So in that respect, it, the the technology has been a great enabler for you know just for information sharing and, and communication final question lady here hello um my name is alexis i am um, head of brand at a new um, fashion startup called a day and i'd love your advice on a new on well on brand building for a new sort of online brand starting today when so many brands are starting online and we're not the first um yeah, it's. I, I think you have to use everything. Uh, you have to use everything you can. I think social media is amazing, and um, and we got on the bandwagon a bit late with that. Um, and we're now all over it, I think. But I think social media is just brilliant, and especially if you've got a visual product. You know, we've got beautiful products, so you post an image, and obviously people are going to like it. Um, uh, so. And I think creating great content and having, I mean, we have a sort of um, a very Ashley Clark tone of voice. So I'm always saying to the team in terms of, yes, we're a fine jewelry brand, but, but as a web business, we have to entertain and engage people. You know, we're sort of a broadcast m media in a way. And so I think making sure that you have a tone of voice that people understand as well as a sort of look and feel for your brand is is really key pr is pr unfortunately celebrity um and and influencers you know i think getting it getting your clothes or your jewelry on the right people who genuinely love your brand and aren't being and this is a good mm. example of when you've got no cash so if our marketing department had millions of pounds we'd probably pay cameron mm. diaz to wear our jewelry which actually is not a great thing i think we want Cameron Diaz wearing our jewellery because she loves the jewellery. Um, otherwise, it just doesn't work. So um, I think, yeah, getting, getting product onto influencers is really key. And then using social media and the web to, to broadcast. You know, you get your bang for your buck ten times over um, than just Cameron Diaz walking on the red carpet and telling her mate. You, 
not only get it in a magazine, you get it on your website, you get it in social media, and you keep banging that drum. So, Beck, that, that's been absolutely fantastic today. Um, I'm sure everybody will agree with me. You know, we love Ashley Clark. We love the way you work, actually. I love your products. Mm -hmm. We all love your products, but we love the way the team works. We love the kind of values that you have. I think my final comment here would be in setting up your own businesses, think about those values. It's not just about kicking down doors and making money. It's about doing it in the right way and you know, creating an environment that's fun and amazing and inspirational for people who can get out there and create. Um, so is there a final thing on the values and the creativity and the spirit of your business and how you'd like that to go as you grow, as you move from being, how many people are you now? We're about 35. So when you get to 10,000 people, what kind of culture and spirit would you like there in the business? Well, we sort of, uh, sort of so I say to people in job interviews, which is, uh, is that if you want a job, can you go and get a job somewhere where else? But if you want to build a brand and actually be instrumental in creating something, then this is the right sort of place for you. And I think that that for me really is, you know, you can get a job in lots of places, but if you want to actually build something, then Astley Clark is a good place to come and work. Beck, thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you everyone for coming this evening.